Okay, so we left off talking about open universe or open statements and universes in the last video. And in this video, we're going to continue more about that, but we're going to really take a look into what quantifiers really are. Now, here I have written out some notes beforehand. Well, I did wrote up some notes beforehand because I moved places. And I decided that it's easier to just write out my notes and just make videos on them rather than do not do notes while I was making the videos. So, uh, well, aside from my babbling, uh, what we have here is for some x and for some x y, they're said to quantify the open statements p x and q x y respectively. So look at what we have here. For one, we have for some x p x, and people remember p x is just some open statement, and for two, we have for x y q x y. Now. A little more about this. So I just want you guys to write this, uh, write these two statements down because I'm not going to copy them over and I'm going to really describe them in the next page. So remember, for some x p x, for some x y p x y. So we're going to talk about for some uh, for some x p x. Now one uses an existential quantifier. That is what it is called. For some x, we could also express that as for at least one x or there exists an x such that. So when you see these kind of statements, then you know right away that it, we are talking about ex an existential quantifier. Now this quantifier can be written in symbolic form as pretty much a reversed e and an x. And what e is, it's, it, it signifies the the words there exists. So it pretty much means that I don't know much about this universe, but I know that there exists something, something. So the statement for some x, px becomes pretty much ex, px because we know that in this universe there is some x that makes px true. Now, number the, the second one that we were talking about, uh, which was, let me go back here, for x, y, q, x, y. Now, e, x, pretty much we just replaced e, x, and e, y for, um, for some, for x, y, q, x, y. So, uh, there's not much to describe here. We just pretty much uh, used the same kind of process of replacing uh, replacing the for some or for uh, x y or x by e x y or e x or whatever whatever kind of variables that you're using. Now, universal quantifiers is something different than existential quantifiers. Uh, what you have to remember here is a pretty much a uh, upside down a and x. Now, what this signifies is it signifies for all x for any x, for each x, or for every x. So pretty much everything in that universe would fit the, fit the bill, or fit the statement. So it's the same for a, uh, for x, y. We could just use a x, a y equals a x, y. That's pretty much the same thing as what we have here for existential quantifier. So really, what the difference is between existential and universal quantifiers uh, let me just grab uh, my toolbar so I can change the color here and do some color coding to help you remember. So for EX, what this pretty much means, it's for some X in the universe. For AX, what it means is for all x in the universe. So this is the difference between ex and ex and I really cannot describe it any more clearly than that. Now the variable x in the open statements px and rx or yeah any kind of for px and rx these are just some kind of open statement some arbitrary statements. So the variable x in these open statements px and rx are they're called free variables of open statements. And ex, px, uh, the variable x in this case is a bound variable, and that is bound by the existential quantifier e. And that's pretty much what I want to go through in this video. There's not much else that I've 
think I should discuss or I can't off the top of my head I don't think there's anything important that you should really remember so from this video the most important things you should remember is the difference between EX and AX and noticing when uh, when for example when your prof gives you in a test for some X you have to recognize that you're talking about is an existential quantifier or if he says that for all X then you have to recognize that he's talking about in universal quantifier and those are the two most important points of this video and I think I'll stop here in the next video what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna go through an example but uh, other than that uh, please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next video bye